where do I start? So many things I want to talk about. I keep hearing the word patience. That's a word that's been bobbing about a lot, patience. And you're going to be patient. Patience is a virtue and a skill to be learned. That's a phrase that was drilled in my head because I once had to write it out hundred times in a detention at school. Which were not to do with me, by the way. But a lass in our class, you know, five minutes before bell. Sneaking pens into pencil case. Slipping it off desk. Lolled back in chair, slipping arms into coat sleeves and just touching out above its shoulder. See, teachers seen that. And we all ended up with this detention. He said, Bell's not gone yet, you're wasting my time, I'm going to waste some of yours. Right, this hundred times. So that phrase has been in my head. Patience is a virtue and a skill to be learned. Patience is a virtue, and I'm a patient man. I'm patient if I can see what we're trying to do. I'm patient if I can see there's a plan, and I can see what the end point of that plan is. And understand within that there'll be setbacks and whatever on the on the road to get where we're going. At the minute, I don't know what the plan is. I don't know what the plan is. We'll talk about systems. So far this season, we've seen a sort of four one four one, seen a four five one, seen a four four two, seen a four two three one, and we haven't looked comfortable in any of them. And that constant chopping and changing of system, it doesn't do players any favours at all. At all. I talked last season, season before last, sorry, a first season in League One. I was very critical of Darren Moore in that opening probably three months of the season. Videos are still out there. Because Darren Moore was faffing a lot. And I kept calling him and saying, he's got to stop faffing. Because that was the same thing. It would have back four, then it would have back five, then it would have back three, then it would three up front, then it would two up front, then it would one up front. And I said then, I think the, I think it won at Pastings, we had by Plymouth, with a sort of catalyst, I had a bit of a meltdown. But I said, pick a system, pick 11 players, and give them 10 games to go eat. And see where chips lay then, tickle it along. And to be fair to Darren Moore, after about a, a month of faffing, he settled on his 3-5-2, he settled on a sort of rough best 11 and we started getting somewhere. Obviously we lost out to Sunderland, we had to go on better a year after, but that's because he settled on an idea and an image for the team to play. And that's the one positive we've got is after about a month he learned his lesson, settled, let's do it like this. So I'm hopeful that Chisco will settle on something and say right, no more faffy. This is me, more or less best 11. This is the system. Let's have a bash at him. But at the minute, he's in the faff stage. Changes every week. Tactical changes, formation changes, they're one thing. Frustrating, frustrating for players because they want to know what they're doing. Players are, and I don't mean this in a nasty way, but players are simple souls in the sense that they want to get on pitch and play football and they want to know what they're doing and they want simple instruction. And if you're playing the same system every week, you become acclimatised to that. You're changing every week. New instructions. Then within that, there's a changes to the personnel. We've, it's a different team every week at minute. And I talked about this again with that Darren Moore's first season in League One. And that just as an example, if you're a set midfield player, and you've got a kid next to you that's played with you for 10 games in there, the understanding grows that that development between two players together you know where he's going to be so you know when he goes up you're going to sweep in you know when he's going to go you know he knows when you're going to go little one twos you know which way he's going to move the ball you know which way he likes to open his body up you learn these little things over a period of games you've got a different partner in there every week every week you're having to learn oh no I've gone here and he's not found me because he don't know I like to make that run so constant chopping and changing like that's no good for team, but it's no good for individual either. Players look like a settled side as much as supporters do. Then it's a different formation every week. The other thing is, and it's a, 
it's frustrating for me is the what I call the Bannon experiment. The Barry Bannon experiment, the old chain. Carlos first come in and, and Bannon first come in, there was about three weeks there, went, oh, try Bannon number ten. Lahukai, he tried it. And to, to be fair to Lahuka, he tried it for about half an hour and went, no, that's not happening. They've all tried it. Darren Moore tried it for a bit. Oh, Barry Bannon, he's a little diminutive, he's got the skills, play him number 10. So, that's out at window. But it's how long it takes them to discover that. Chisco seems absolutely intent that he's going to make it work. But I don't think it is going to work. I'm seeing Barry Bannon today. Still one of the best players in club. Anything that we do good going forward is going to probably involve him or George Byers at some stage. You want Barry Bannon facing forward. You want Barry Bannon with a play in front of him so he can pick his passes out. Not with his back to goal, waiting for ball to come to him, losing out on an header, and then just running around, you know, with arms going as if he's trying to take off. It's no use to him, it's no use to team. It's actually negating the skill set of one of our best players. I've seen one of them heat maps today. He was further forward than Lee Gregory. What? I don't get it. Now listen, I don't want Barry Bannon sat on centre half tall, picking up a two foot pass off him and then playing an Hollywood ball. We, we saw that under Paul uh, Monk and it, we don't want to go there again. But that middle ground. He don't want to be too far up, he don't want to be too far deep. Get him in there doing what he can do. Now there's an argument, Barry Bannon can't play in a two-man midfield. It don't matter, did it? Because Darren Moore negated that problem last season by saying, right, you and George Byers, you play middle, get forward, get your passes going, join in attack, and we'll just have Will Volkson behind you, just sweeping up, giving you the opportunities to get forward. Now the new lad they brought in today... Diaby, I can quite easily see him doing that job in front of back four and allowing Bannon and, and Bias to get forward. But at the, the minute, he seems to be obsessed with this having two in there. Good to see George Bias back today. A little bit rusty, as he's bound to be. But ten yards deeper than where he's most effective. And Barry Bannon, 15, 20 yards higher up than where he's most effective. And this isn't about making wholesale changes. This is just about moving two players round a little bit. So get Bannon back in another 10, 15 yards. Just get Byers up there another 5, 10 yards. There'll be people, I know, football's moved on. It's very technical now. It's about formations and tactics and blah, blah, the inverted pyramid and all that. And I'm a dinosaur. But there's one truism... In football, this is true today as it was 180 years ago when Sheffield Club first played Allen, and that is this: if you want to have half a chance, put your players on the park in the positions where they're most comfortable. It really is that simple. That will never change in the history of football. Put players in areas where they're comfortable with ball, which sort of then brings me to back four. I've got no problem with a back four. I like a back four. I do. I like a back four. But play, play players in their natural position. I'm looking today at game. And I do that thing. And I'm sure you all do it. Where subliminally you're marking players out of ten, aren't you? You're thinking about the game and you're thinking, oh, he's had a good game. He's had a slightly better game. Maybe he's a six and he's a seven. And I'm marking low today. And I'll cut for my own. Solid lad. Six foot odd. Well built. Left foot. Young. All things you're looking for in a centre half when you're going into the championship. And that's what he is. He's a centre half. He's not a left back. Put players in areas where they're comfortable. So today in my head, I've sort of marked him quite long. I've given him probably a six out of ten. But then I feel bad because I'm thinking, is it his fault? Because he's out there, he's doing as well as he can in that position. 
but he's a, he's a left-sided centre half. It, it really is that simple. This big centre half thing all across the back. Tony Poole is coming to the year, and he did that massive back four, probably the biggest back four we'd had in history at club. And he got pulled to pieces for it. Oh, typical Poolis, isn't it? Sort of but at least there was a method to it. You knew what it was going to be. You knew it was going to be right. You four of it back. Full backs, don't bother getting forward. You're just going to stay there, head things and kick things. We'll play off long throws, flick ons off a big man, blah, blah, blah. Because that's what he does. We're conceding up possession. And clearly wanting to play on counter attack. And I've not particularly got any problem with that either. But if you wanted to play on counter attack, one of the most important things is you've got to have those defenders that are in front of your goalkeeper are comfortable at playing the ball out quickly and accurately. Now, so far, we're, we're managing one part of that. We're getting ball away quickly. It's going all over the fucking shop. It's got to be accurate. If, if, if you're going to play counter attack, the, the passing has got to be accurate. It's not. It's getting smashed all over the shop. You can smash it all over show and then pinging it down pitch to a four foot note Barry Bannon jumping up against a six foot five century half trying to win a fucking header and then he's running about what the fuck Liam Palmer thought he looked rusty today Liam Palmer bound to be he's been out he's had a, an operation I think it might have been a double operation so this part of that part of that a bit ring rusty but played at season last season, and one of the features of Liam Palmer last season, not just at right wing back, but at centre half as well, bombing on, bombing on, driving on with that supreme fitness that he's got. There's been none of that today. He's been back there, and I can only think that's instruction. Don't get caught out. Don't go up there and get caught out. Let's be nice and solid. Other side we've got for male. <sighs> There's only so many ways you can say it. The lad's a centre half. We're doing him no favour. Doing the team no favours. We're doing him no favours. And we've got a kid who's not playing left back, Reese James, who is a left back. A left back who's really comfortable on ball. If you're going to play a counter attack, if you're wanting to sucker them in, and then for your keeper when he gets it to throw a quick ball out to full backs and get things going. You want a fullback who's comfortable on ball. Reese James is very comfortable on ball. He's a lovely passer at ball, good crosser at ball. He's not playing at left back. We're playing a set at half there. It's like the worst of two worlds. The midfield shape. He can go to a back four. You know, I'm not one of these who prescribes to the thing that we've got to go with 3-5-2 because that's what we did last season. But you can go to a back four and still make the changes minimal by saying, OK, it's a back four, it might take you a while to get used to it. But to help aid that, what we're going to do is, the three in front of you, they're going to play in the same shape they played last season. With one sitting and two in front of them. They're going to be the same. No one's going to change here. So it brings that bit of continuity. But as it is, one week there's one in there sitting, the next week there's two in there sitting. Then we keep switching to 4 4 2. There's two in there, often getting overrun. Don't help anybody. It's very, very frustrating to watch. Now, the lad DRB today, if he'd played the full game, he probably would have been my man of the match. He's shown to me he can do that role shuttling about there, yeah, absolutely no problem. But put him in there and let Bannon and Byers get in front of him and do what they do best. Because if we're to do out this season, them two's going to be involved. Byers and Bannon, with their passing, are our best hope of scoring goals. <sighs> scoring goals. Nobody likes one up front. But one up front can be very successful, can't it? And it depends how you do it. If you play one up front and you've got two wide lads who are joining in all the time, it's, it's really three up front, isn't it? Most of the time it's two up with one of them wide. And it's like that, isn't it? Like, remember them little balls that you used to have on desk? Let one go, and the other one goes out at the other side, and they do it. 
Summit Cradle. But that's how front three should work. One's out wide, other one's in with centre four as second strike. I've not seen that. I've seen one out there, one out there, and Gregory stuck on his own down middle. Isolated. This is exactly the same thing that we had when Darren Moore first come. In fact, going all the way back, that very first game that Carlos had against Reading at Hillsborough, it's the exact same problem we had there as well. Isolated. Over here it was Shadipu and uh, Corbin who, they were getting nowhere near Gregory. He was completely isolated because they didn't get in. And it can work, but you've got to have players getting in there. One up front. If only we'd got in the squad a striker that could play that middle as a centre forward on his Todd in that long roll. Oh, Michael Smith did that for Rotherham. That's exactly the role he played. Long striker. As is, he's on bench. Is he best striker in division? No, I don't think he is. Is it best finisher in club? No, I think Lee Gregory's probably best finisher in club. But, horses for courses. If you're going to play one up front, it's got to be Smith. For me. And then, the substitutions. Sorry I've not talked much about game, but there's all these things that, that's been in my head. We've got this way of playing. With Barry Bannon, he's back to goal. Challenging six foot odd centre halves. George Bay is 15 yards deeper than he needs to be, so there's that huge gap. Um, and then we make changes and we sort of go 4 4 to end. He sort of, right, fuck it, talk front, let's. And I've not even got a problem with that. Now and again, you've got to catch a position off guard. Now and again, oh yeah, just. But if you're suddenly going to go 4 4 2. Start trying to sling stuff into the box. You've still got to give them a little bit of quality to get on end of. You know, them them flat balls into the box on a sort of half diagonal. They meet and drink for the centre half. What you need is someone who can get round it, put different delivery in. So if you're going to switch, if that's one of your things before game where you think, right lads, this is how we're going to do it. But our emergency backup system, if it's all going to shit, is we're going to 4-4-2 and we're going to sling it in box. Okay. But if you're going to do that, you've got to have someone who can sling it in box. But unfortunately, the player we've got who's probably best at the club at slinging it in box, is not even in squad. Marvin Johnson. Marvin Johnson. I talked all last season about Marvin Johnson. It frustrates me. Frustrates me. Sometimes I think he should get it, man, and he puts a first time in. Sometimes I think he goes up, man, man, he should put a first time in. Very frustrating play. But what I said all last season is, as frustrating as he can be, he's best cross of a ball in club. If you're gonna if if you're gonna play four four two and you want someone to put ball in box, then surely to God, you've got to put your best cross of a ball in match day squad. I cannot. Cannot understand that at all. At all. X many assists last season. I think he was second in ice number of passes after Bannon. Not got a sniff. Not got a sniff. Now I know managers bring their own players in and they like to put them in. You've got to have some threads of continuity. And what you can't do is come in and throw baby out with bath water and think, right, this is why I'm doing things. Bower and this, you know, out. And that brings me to another thing, which is the team bond. Now, we've signed a lot of players, and we needed to sign players. We needed more depth. I've got no problem with that. And I'm not writing any new players off, because it's still early doors, and they've got to settle. But, as I said before, it's about integrating them into the squad integrating them into the side we've already got a, a decent nucleus I'm not saying a brilliant nucleus of a squad for this division but a decent nucleus of a squad for this division that just needed one or two putting in to acclimatise to the group they've got such a 
a keen bond last season. It's all out there, we, you know, we've all seen videos, a very close-knit group. Suddenly, Dawson's dropped, and he is dropped, there's no other way of saying it. The new lads come in. It's not like Dawson's had ten games and dropped some clangers and, oh, I'm, I'm putting another kid in. He's had one game, made some good saves, the new kid's come in, straight in. Now, he's not come in because he's been playing billion tint reserves and I think he deserves a chance. It's coming out of a couple of training sessions and straight in team. That can only ever smack to the dropped player as favouritism. Oh, Gaffer's brought his man in, I'm out, don't matter what I do. Don't matter what I do. That that can be bad for Manel. Equally Marvin Johnson. Bombed out. Now close group of players. And if you're winning and he's you know, you're in team and your mate's being dropped, you can sort of put up with that because you're playing and we, you're doing well. If you're playing and you're losing, and there's all new lads who you don't really know much about, and you're playing three and lost three, you suddenly start looking and thinking, my mate should be in here. Why is he not in? Mentality-wise, that can cause big problems in a squad. And what, what a situation you don't want to happen and it can happen, especially when results start going flat and everybody gets on that down and mode in dressing room. What you don't want to happen is that thing of cliques, two camps, or new lads and favourites, and old lads who's been bombed out. You've got to avoid that. So, and I'm usually really positive, but I can't see what he's trying to do. The personnel changes every week. The tactics seem to change every half an hour. The one or two things that I feel he should change get almost left alone. Best crosser of a ball's been bombed out of his squad. Goalkeepers drop without really making any cock ups. Folks are shuffling about. There's folks out of position. Like I said, for Mayo, Bannon. I mean, Patterson, Patterson, other week. Patterson had a decent game at right back um, against Southampton. They would all offer his like a cheap suit. But he had a good game, stuck to the task, and by the second half, the young lad they got on, on left-hand side, I thought, he, I thought he'd got a grip on him. Next game, he swapped over. He's on right wing. If somebody's just had a good game in a position... You swap with him. Why? Continuity. There was possibly there a chance, if they'd left it, of, of Delgado and Patterson building a partnership. When I go, you go here. If I come inside, you drop. Oh, OK. Well. But suddenly Delgado's moving across his other side. What? I'm going to say exactly the same thing. That I said last year. We did and more. Pick a system. Pick players. In their best areas at pitch. And give them a run. Don't keep faffy. Or we're going to be in trouble. Now listen. I'm positive. And it's early doors. Oh my God. We're only nine points off top. If you've been super positive about it. But we're bottom at table and we've got no points. So we can talk about blueprints. We can talk about philosophies. But sometimes blueprints and philosophies have got to get in the fucking bin. And you've just got to go back to basics. People in the best positions. In a formation that everybody can understand. That gets the best out of those individuals. And give them a run of games. Because if we don't do that, genuinely, I'm looking at these fixtures. Cardiff, Leeds, I fly in Ipswich Town. Keep faffing like this. Changing formation. Wasting Barry Bannon as a second centre forward. Playing George Byers too deep. Playing a centre half at left back. Having no left back in squad. Having your best crosser at ball set at home on his ass doing nothing. Cardiff, Leeds and Ipswich. 
Can you see points coming? Now always, always in football there's a chance. There's always a possibility. Might bounce one in off somebody's bell end. Might get a dodgy penalty. But over the course of a season, quality shows. And teams that know what they're doing, teams that are well drilled, teams that have got players in the best positions, will get results. Cardiff leads Ipswich. Three very, very tough games. Three very tough games if you've got a settled side. Three very tough games if Barry Bannon's in his best position. Three very tough games if you've got your best crosser at ball on pitch. When you're not doing them things, when you're chucking it all out with bath water and you, you change it off, oh, second half, let's just go 4 4 2 and just start twatting it 40 yards down pitch because it's not working. When you're doing that every week, them three games go from being very tough games to very, very tough games. Don't I don't want to have a complete downer on it because the nucleus of the squad that came up last season has got enough about it to beat the teams that are going to be round about where we are. Uddersfield, Middlesbrough, QPR, them sort of teams. It's got, that squad that came up has got enough to beat them. With the additions we've made, more than enough. But, an average Preston team today, no offence to them, but they'll probably finish between 10 and 15 for me. Very average. They didn't have to really get in second gear. It would have an improved performance from Wednesday. Couldn't really have been a lot worse. But improved performance from Wednesday. But again, we're hammering square pegs in round holes and expecting it to work. And when it don't work, we're just chucking board up in the air and saying, oh, well, let's see if it comes, how it comes out of that. Sorry, it's a bit miserable, but... Got to create opportunities. You're not going to create opportunities with your best players miles away from where they do their best work. Do you know what I mean? If I, so, if I want some work done in the house, you know, I don't get a roofer to come round and a brickie to come round and then set a brickie. Right, you don't roof and you get that ladders, you can put 14s in. Because they're both going to go, well, I don't do that. Let the roofer do the roofing, let the brickie lay the bricks. Do you know what I mean? Frustrating, very frustrating. And a centre forward on bench, who's the only one who can play on his own up front. We eventually put two up front, we don't put any wingers on who can cross ball with any accuracy. We're trying to play counter attack. We centre the halves at full back who aren't brilliant at passing ball out. And like I said, just the the other worry. We've suddenly bombed players out who've been a big part of a successful team here before. That can start upsetting things in camp. You know. Playing counter attack. Probably our paces forward player, Windass, is on Benji. This isn't about footballing culture. This isn't really about tactics. This is about the most basic, basic level of what's he good at? What's he good at? What's he good at? Right, well, he can go there, he can go there, he can do... And that will never change. Like I said, from today all the way back to Sheffield Club playing Alan. That's the one truism in football that will never change. Get your best players in their best areas at pitch. Once you've done that, you can tickle things along. But while ever we're doing this, you're pissing in wind and hoping for the best. <laughs>